Yeah, Metaxa 12 stars is is where the kind of premium range begins. So it's much it's it's matured for longer in in barrels. Uh, so it's got a bit more complexity. So you can drink it on its own or with ice or in some signature cocktails. So some cocktails which uh, enhance some of the complexities of of the 12 star. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe we're going to try later a little bit, and I can talk. Why, talk why, to why not try now? Yeah, why not try now? Perfect uh, you moment. Know, how do you say "carpe diem"? Live your life. Yeah, or live in the moment, or stuff like uh, that. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. I, the, you're the Latin speaking. <laughs> yeah, but country. My, my Latin is not so yeah. good, unfortunately. So seize the moment, is it? Yeah, stuff like that. So seize here, the moment. Yeah. I'm going to put it to the camera so Claudio will take a closer look. This is a Metaxa my tasting kit and it's uh, signed by this gentleman constantinos raptis correct which i think it's here on this uh, leaflet is that, it that's him okay yeah, yeah that's uh he's the master uh, blender yeah he's the metaxa master we call him the metaxa master because he's not only uh blending he's also distilling so it's ah, um, two job roles. Yeah, it's I mean it's the whole it's the whole job from from start to finish. He he's also working in the in the vineyards overseeing um, uh, the harvest of the grapes because the the grapes are a very important part of the process of of making metaxa, which I can talk a little bit more of. Sure, if you uh, want. Uh, yes, <clears throat> until I get all the bottles here. So here we have a tasting glass which looks very nice. I was preparing some tasting glasses and they are like the same. ISO official international standard tasting glasses. Yes, and maybe you can tell us a bit about the bottles while I'm... Uh... Well, these are little the samples for uh, for our consumption only, specially delivered. Um... But this kit like this, how I got it here, you give it to uh, liquor stores, to bars? No, no, this is just for private consumption. Oh. I, um, seriously, I just uh, I just uh, use this uh, just use this for personal tasting. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So I, I I'm a, feeling lucky now. You are lucky. You, there's only a few of these in uh, in Romania. So um, yeah, and because it's the reserve range, I mean these these are spirits which. Um, yeah, the prices are, are are much higher for these spirits. Uh, as you said, the five star, the seven star, are, are, are quite, um, yeah, quite are more affordable. affordable. Uh, but you know, with the <clears throat> with the reserve range, as the more mature the spirit becomes, uh, the more expensive they become. So uh, with the Angel's Treasure, yeah, you're talking uh, you know much more expensive uh, sp spirit. So you have a little. Was Gurchit. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Skate. We're cheapskates. No, we're not. But uh, yeah, we have some just nice little sample bottles this evening for uh, for this special taste. Okay, so yeah. let's let's give it a try. Yeah. So uh, we'll start. We'll start with the twelve star. Okay. And we're going to move, you know, through the range. Um, so I was saying. Yeah, what defines Metaxa? I was talking a bit about uh, yeah. about the grapes because. Um, <clears throat> A lot of people uh, wrongly assume that Metaxa is uh, just another brandy. You know, it's made from uh, fermented grapes, which are then distilled twice, and it's just a Greek brandy. And it's often referred to as a Greek brandy. I mean, it fits in the brandy category. But Metaxa is made in a very unique way because it's made from grape distillate, but it's also combined with Muscat wines, sweet Muscat wines. And also with an essence, with a secret, an essence made from a secret ingredient, which includes uh, some Greek rose petals and other Mediterranean spices. So there's actually three components uh, that go into the, the construction of, of Metaxa. So this is different to the way that cognac's made and different to the way that many, uh, many other brandies are made. So uh, I wanted to ask you because I have this curiosity and I wrote it down also for today. Yeah. When I entered in the bar industry, like it was 2008. Right. So I've heard a rumor or stuff like that, that the Metaxa company had a big lawsuit with the guys from BNIC, the Bureau National Interprofessional du Cognac, because they had written on their bottle the cognac, the Metaxa guys. Is it true or is it just a um, rumor? Well, I know for a fact that Metaxa, I mean, Metaxa, first was founded the company in 1888 so i mean it's an old company and it was it was uh founded by spiros metaxa who was a, a merchant 
um, rich guy who decided uh, he tasted lots of cognacs from France and he decided, okay, I'm going to try and make a Greek style of cognac. And he made Metaxa, you know, created a distillery and started producing Metaxa and used his uh, business connections to begin trading <clears throat> Metaxa uh, in different parts of the world, including one of the first uh, export destinations was actually Romania. And for a while, there was a distillery in Odessa, which, you know, okay. is very close to Romania on the Black yeah. Sea. So uh, the links to Romania are, are, are quite strong for this reason. Anyway, I'm digressing. But um, <laughs> at that time... Take your time. Uh, at that time, yes. Uh, he It was written on the bottle, uh, Metaxa Cognac, actually spelt with a, with a K, you know, yeah. and then the way it's phonetically uh, pronounced. Um, so, yes, it used to have on the label... Metaxa cognac, but at some point that was removed, um, and it couldn't, it can't be referred to as a cognac, as the legislation regarding cognac is very strict and very well protected, as is the legislation with champagne and many other, you know, brands. You can't refer to it, let alone label. So I think it might have had something not to do with the label so recently, but maybe a, a reference to it being called cognac king. Okay. Commun communication or something. So definitely, we never refer to to Metaxa as, as a Greek cognac. Uh, if it was done in the past, it's now, yeah, for various reasons, respect and for legal reasons, but also because it's a very different product. It's, um, it's a different spirit. It's made in a completely different way. The climate uh, and the grapes used in cognac are very different to the grapes that are used for the distillate and dis different to the grapes uh, that are grown in Samos. Uh, so if you see on the picture with... Yeah, the, that's uh, an island, I think, Samos. Yeah, Samos. So although the, the uh, Metaxa is not uh, distilled or matured on Samos, the vineyards on Samos are a very important, uh, play a very important role in the, in the construction of Metaxa. Because all the grape, uh, all the grapes uh, that are grown on on Samos for Metaxa are Muscat grapes, similar to the Muscat wines that we get in Romania. Very aromatic, very perfumed. Uh, so they give the ver these very perfumed flavors, um, and they add an element of sweetness and smoothness to to Metaxa. Okay, so, uh, I'm dying to yeah, to we taste should, it. Um, yeah, because. <clears throat> You've uh, talked so beautiful about it, so now I'm just curious, you know. Okay, so let's smell and then taste, yeah. First of all, I was just looking through this leaflet and I could not uh, uh, notice, I, I don't know if I'm saying correctly, when it, I could not help but notice, yeah, this is it, the beauty of the bottle, so the design and the lines and the shapes. and Yeah, the, this is something incredible. that's... Um, Yeah, I mean, they look even more elegant than they, they did a few years ago. I think the whole range now, it's been redesigned and repackaged in the last few years. Um, so it looks like a complete range of, uh, of, of, of spirits, from, from the younger spirits to the, the five star to the, to the top of the range. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, the, the design is really nice and elegant, which reflects the, reflects the, the spirit as well. Yeah. This one, the result, wow, incredible. So, um, what we are tasting now? No, we're tasting 12 star. Okay. Yeah, we started with 12 star. Oh, so yeah. this is our uh, beginning gonna, on yeah, this journey. Yeah, so really like the reserve range is, is let's say, is starting with, with 12 star. Because okay. this, is the, this is the matured uh, version. This is when, so... You know, Metaxa is kept uh, in barrels to mature, the distillate, the, the, the wines as well, they're matured separately. Um, and um, what's happening when the wines are kept in, uh, in, in oak barrels is obviously they're interacting with the, with the oak and also with the air outside. So as they're aging, they're developing more intense flavors. Uh, the fresher fruit flavors, the more floral flavors, are developing and turning into dry fruit, uh, turning into what we call developed flavors, you know? So everything becomes a little bit sort of more intense. Um, you're tasting things like maybe fig. Uh, you begin to get nuances of different spices and chocolate. Uh, so the maturation process 
in any spirits, any aged spirits, you usually get these more complex layers of aromas uh, and taste developing over time that comes from the interaction and from the process of it being kept in, uh, in oak. Yeah. And so 12 Star is really where this, uh, where this journey begins of, of real in complexity. And hopefully you're going to see with the next two how this develops over 20, 40, 60 years. Okay, when coming to cocktails, uh, how would you combine them at Taxa 12 Stars? So with the 12 Star, even though I said, you know, recommend to drink it neat or with a, with a cube of ice to, to enjoy it, um, you can use it in cocktails as well. You know, it's very good for some sort of um, signature cocktails. Um, I mean, you can try all different things. It's very smooth, you know, and it's got a sweetness, but you've got the vanilla that's coming from the oak. You've also got this spiciness, bit of cinnamon uh, and these different kind of Mediterranean spicy flavors. You've got the rose petal perfumed aroma. So there's lots of different lots of different things you can do with it. You know, you can try You can combine it with uh, with the uh, orange. You can combine it with chocolate, coffee, uh, really experiment with different things mm. or you can just simply try doing a metax or old fashioned I, i was thinking the same yeah. thing i would try this in a in an yeah. old fashioned when you said coffee figs yeah this kind of aromas exactly yeah. so i mean that's a good place to start to begin as a base if you're experimenting with 12 stars is to make an old fashioned just to add some bitterness to it and get you know some orange peel involved there and just uh just to enjoy it and to let it open up and then after that you can really begin experimenting with it and and try different things you know i've made a cocktail with this uh which uh i made it with greek yogurt and some okay. honey uh which was like a kind of uh i called it a samos fizz because it's a bit like a ramos fizz okay. but with metaxa instead of i, instead I of would gin. try that for sure yeah and using greek yogurt so it's something that's got a synergy with the The, the with metaxa and um yeah it's got i mean it's quite a complex uh spirit is the 12 star even though it's the beginning of the pre premium range because you've got those honey flavors you've got those chocolatey flavors nice and smooth very versatile have a lot of fun with it and because i think it doesn't truly sit in a category you know it's 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 not a brandy uh, it's, uh, so i was uh, it's, it's planning to ask you yeah, this so yeah. is it safe to say that it is in the brandy area but it's something yeah. specific yeah because i mean because it's made you know from grapes distillate and grapes it's in the brandy segment in the brandy category but because it's got added essence to it and because it's got the uh, muscat wines added it's not truly uh yeah it's not the same as a uh, as as other brandies okay yeah. so let's taste the next one and while we are pouring what do you suggest the uh, the angel one or the reserve no we'll go with the we're gonna go through them uh chronologically so we'll okay um, take the private uh, we'll take the private reserve next i'll which, put a bit of water first yeah. in my glass Um, and then we'll finish with the the angel's treasure. Okay. So I've never tried these two. So the last ones. Private Reserve is um, was first made uh, in 1992. Um, okay. Pour, Thank I'll you. Pour, I'll pour from here. Um, ah, you don't want me for... Okay, no problem. We can open it later. Yeah, because Claudio is, I think he's dying of fart and he will benefit from for this sure. as well. Um, so the private reserve, um, yeah, first created by uh, by the, the Metaxa Master in, in 1992. Um, and every year a different uh, batch is made. So it's uh, a limited edition range. When it when it runs out, it runs out. Um, and this is using using like older distillates, uh, older older casks. Um, so you should feel on the nose much more complexity. When I first smelled it, it reminds me of um, a Portuguese wine, the, um, the sherry wine. Yeah. It smells the same. Okay, let's have a yeah. let's have a taste. It's so smooth. Smooth, yeah. How um, 
How much uh, ABV does it have? 40%. 40%. Same as oh. the 12 star. So it's exactly the same ABV as the, the previous one. But per, it perhaps tastes smoother because spent much more time in the in the cask mm. and therefore it's more rounded it's much more uh, voluptuous you know if if the 12 star was sort of elegant and nice this is much smoother much more voluptuous mm. um, and you get more of those dried fruit uh, flavors you know really gorgeous kind of caramel sweetness with figs and dried apricots um, yeah, more layers of complexity, some interesting, yeah, it's very good, interesting flavors underneath. But it's also, I mean, it's still still young, still some fruity flavors there. But it's something to savor and enjoy a bit more. You perhaps wouldn't use this in a cocktail. You can try do some you know, yeah. premium cocktails, but actually, this is really enjoyable on its own um, at mm -hmm. this temperature. This is exactly what I needed after a long day like this. Yeah. Very, good. very good. I've seen that you are doing a lot of, um, I don't know if there are promotional events, but uh, you know Dragos from Touching Art Cocktail. I do indeed, yeah. He's doing a lot of stuff with Metaxa, you That's know. That's right, yeah. Have you been to Poyana Brasov? I have, yeah. So for the ones who, uh, who are looking at our show, uh, Poyana Brasov is like a mountain ski area which is like 12 kilometers from here from Brasov and it's very very nice and uh, this guy Dragos is going up in the mountains and he's doing some kind of parties or events or stuff like that yeah. tastings and only with Metaxa but he's doing I think hot drinks there yeah I mean which seems natural because it's apres ski yeah uh, yeah he's doing some some hot drinks uh so actually, that's the thing with Metaxa, because it's, you know, considered by many to be a brandy, it's something that's very warm, but it's a Mediterranean style of brandy, Metaxa is Greek, so, yeah, it fits very well in winter, but also in summer as well. You have those Mediterranean notes, so if you want to have it in a nice chilled cocktail in a long drink, it's perfect for summer, and if you want something warm and spicy, mixed with some apple juice or some cinnamon like uh, a hot toddy maybe yeah exactly a hot toddy bit of lemon kushware um, cloves it's really wonderful you know it's very it's a very versatile um very versatile spirit so yeah dragos is doing um lots of events in winter but also in summer he does lots of events uh you know at the beach and at, uh, at the black sea and uh and other places with with long drinks you know, Metaxa, Metaxa with ginger ale, Metaxa five stars with ginger ale and some cucumber is really delicious. Oh, with yeah. I've never tried it with cucumber. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. But it makes sense now that you are saying this. Yeah, it's just a very nice kind of cool, refreshing long drink. And um, the ginger, the spiciness of a ginger ale just enhances some of the the flavors of a, of a, of a five star, which is, you know, quite a simple, fruity expression of metaxa but with with some ginger ale um yeah it really enhances those flavors so it's quite a delicious uh, long drink and you have a really good uh, ginger uh, ale in your portfolio true ginger yeah, yeah. natural ginger ale indeed yeah yeah uh, i i know this product when uh, from when it first started yeah. many many years true ago true tonic and true ginger yeah, and, and true and true energy it lasted until now so that's good it's still going yeah it's still it's still going it's uh it's still in those little cans yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um yeah it's uh i love ginger ale it's like you know ginger beer it's, people often confuse ginger beer and ginger ale because they're quite different products if you yeah. know that especially like jamaican ginger beer is really spicy it's it's quite hot whereas ginger ale in the form of like canada dry ginger ale it's a much more delicate uh mixing uh mixer and, and i find it more fizzy a bit yeah i mean it's it's um well, it, it it depends. I don't know the, the 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 bubbles on it can be quite refined. I think on a on a ginger ale and on yeah. a on a ginger beer, it's much more aggressive. You feel the kind of uh, the spiciness from the ginger. Um, but gin ginger ale is like a, one of the classic mixes, you know, especially in the U.S. Canada Dry and uh, ginger ale uh, is something that people were always putting with whiskey and with all different types of uh, of spirits to make long drinks. And so, yeah, true ginger. It's, it works really well with um, with uh, Metax. It works really well with Remy Martin uh, Vsop. 
Okay. Yeah, BSLP. Um, if you combine the two, it also enhances it. I've never had my fair share of cognac, to be honest. I've never tried too many, uh, too many selections yeah. because you know when you are bartending. You kind of stay away from these kind of drinks, but now I'm starting to be a bit sorry, you know, because there is a lot of complexity in these kind of there drinks. Is, yeah, and I mean, there's a lot to discover with uh, with cognac-based cocktails. Um, yeah, indeed, like cognac's not as popular as it is as it should be, and as it as it in, as it was. Um, but there's, you know, famous, famous ones like the sidecar. Maybe we'll talk about sidecar later when we talk about Quantrill. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, this is a cognac, classic cognac based uh, cocktail. Um, yeah, I mean, cocktails based on any kind of brandy are, are quite interesting. And I really fancy them. Yeah. So we have one more. We do. Left. We should. Uh, we should try the the final one. Okay. So um, it's called the Angel's Treasure. Angel's Treasure. So um, the bottle looks. The bottle looks incredible. Angel's Treasure is with made with um single cask strength. Yeah. So, so the it, idea behind the name Angel's Treasure. I don't know whether you're familiar with um in Scotland in the Angel Sc share Angel share yeah. exactly so in Scotland they refer to the alcohol that evaporates from the casks and goes up into the atmosphere as the angel share because the angels in heaven get to enjoy it um, in Metaxa in Greece obviously the humidity is a little bit different to Scotland um, so you get less evaporation of alcohol you get more alcohol remaining therefore in the in the cask which is why Angel's Treasure is 42.2% rather than 40%. Okay. So it's referred to as not the Angel's share because they don't get to keep it. It's, it's <laughs> the Angel's treasure. It's it's what's left. So, um, yeah, we, we will try. Uh, yeah, I'm dying to, to taste it. So you say that all these uh, selections, we can find it in Romania also. You can indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, thank you. You can find it, you know, on on back bars of uh, of bars with extensive age spirit collections. Um, you can find it online to buy. Um, but and yeah, in, indeed, you can find it in um, in retail in a few supermarkets and places like that. But you'll generally, yeah, it's a more selective product. I mean, it's more much more expensive. So the nose at the first uh, glance is a bit of is a bit more intense than the previous one. More intensity. The color is much more uh, intense as well. It's a darker color because it's a it's a more aged spirit. Spent more than forty years aging. Wow! Some of the it's a blend of different. Uh, of different uh, distillates and, and wines. Uh, but yeah, you've got something that's really quite special in the glass. No, let's taste. Do you know the bar from Athens, Clumsies? I do, yeah. We have... Um, Metaxa has a good collaboration with Clumsies. It's one of the, the bars that they work very closely with, yeah. So they, um, a few year years ago, they organized... Um, an internship, you know? Ah, right, yep. Yeah. It was like a small competition and they say, well, if we select you, you can um, come to our bar for one week to see all our secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you make um, a guest shift and wow. you you get all the clumsy experience, you know? Yeah. So I, I've been lucky enough to be one of the winners. Ah, bravo. I didn't know this. Yeah, so I've been there for one week. And the first thing that I've noticed there, even uh, even though they are a top bar with a lot of uh, exposure, yeah, when you're looking into their cocktail menu, yeah, the main uh, ingredients are locally or from Greece. Yes. Some very... Uh, a lot of uh, Greek products inside the yes. menu. So when I've... I've asked about they say well we are in Greece first we promote everything that we can here and then the rest of the spirits so that that really impressed me you know the, yeah so this passion for locally yeah locally made products it's something that's um 
it's shared actually with the whole of the the Remy Quantro family because it's um you know it's a big international company is is Remy Quantro but at the same time they really believe in in the uh in all of the different spirits uh, producers that they they work with in 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 keeping this sense of of terroir or locality with the price so whether it's scotch whiskey with brochladi or the botanist or whether it's metaxa remy martin yeah they really believe in in keeping the people uh working closely with the spirits together it's like a big family really yeah and so it's a very important part of these things and metaxa indeed it's like one of the things it prides itself on is um is the fact that it's it's really trying to create uh, cocktails that, that have an identity of some kind of locality 